I welcome uh, Klaus to bring up his panel onto the stage. And a automotive company all talking about how digital is cornerstone to their business and if they don't get their digital strategy right, they're going to be out of business. So clearly the golden era of enterprise software has arrived and we definitely see, you know, whether it's in India or in the US, that a lot of the large companies, whether it's pure tech companies or uh, companies in traditional industries are constantly looking for the next um, set of innovation and tech products that can help them accelerate their business. Um, I think with that we're also seeing of course enterprise investing in India has been relevantly uh, nascent emerging space uh, and I would say that it's definitely picked up a lot in the last 10 years and we can see different waves but in the last two years it's kind of picked up even more um, probably also because consumer uh, and there, the, the winners have started to emerge and people have a hard time investing beyond the two, three leaders, which are the clear winners, um, and it's more of a winner take all, whereas in enterprise, because there's so many broad opportunities there, horizontals, uh, verticals, subsectors, um, and there, there's more opportunities to build multiple winners. I think the other one that we've seen why enterprise investing is so popular in the US and now starting to become popular in India is uh, that it tends to be a bit more capital efficient and uh, you can kind of with less capital scale something to IPO scale uh, and then lastly uh, there is a very vibrant M&A market for uh, scaled up enterprise assets. So you know the golden era clearly in terms of opportunity set has arrived uh, and um, uh, we look forward to an interactive panel. We, we, doing the panel for about 20, 25 minutes and we'll leave certainly more than five minutes for Q&A with these eminent uh, enterprise investors. So maybe to open it up, uh, uh, the first era of uh, enterprise investing in India was one where the likes of an iFlex and a Finical kind of started to go regional and, and went to adjacent markets to sell their banking software products. Uh, whereas if in, re in recent times, the more recent startups in the enterprise space, a bunch of them have gone global immediately uh, and have not kind of followed this regional model. So with that, you know, Shaker, I'd like to turn it over to you. Uh, your views on, you know, to be an investable and scalable business, do you need to be uh, addressing the global market or is there an opportunity for a regional play? Yeah, so uh, this is Shaker Kirani. So I work at Axel an early stage investor. Uh, we've done around 120 odd uh, investments in the country, uh, predominantly in most of the technology uh, led uh, things. And we, our companies today probably touch uh, 100 million plus of Indians. And one way or the other, you'll be dealing with a company that we have invested. Uh, so uh, just starting out, um, I, I believe this is a golden era, as he said in terms of an opportunity to create technology for the large enterprises. Uh, you know, the large enterprises are disrupting themselves by technology companies, and if they don't adopt technology, it won't happen. And hence, it's a golden era for startups to build the software as a service companies for uh, the markets. The question is, can someone build a large company? A large company in, in VC parlance is, can you get to a hundred million dollar of top line revenue, 80% gross margin business, just focusing on India, or focusing on Southeast Asia and India, or do you have to go global? So the all comes down to the question of your idea and the size of the market, in general, I personally prefer going global. My thought process always is, anyway, it's a 10-year journey. Anyway, you're starting a startup. You're going to give up on your wife, kids, family, money, and everything else. Might as well take a biggest challenge and go for it. Why settle for a small one? So if you win globally, you win in India. So might as well go for global. Global means you know, win in US, win in Europe, and win in India. And who is there to stop you? you know, if you build a great uh, world-class product, and has got value from uh, building with an extraordinary engineering team from India and uh, distribute it at a highly efficient uh, pricing, you know, the, the world is at your doorstep. That's my thoughts. 
Mohan, I know that you have a couple of very successful SaaS companies in your portfolio, which are actually regional stalwarts, uh, Capillary uh, being one of them. So i uh, love to hear your views on this as well. Uh, I think I take a little bit different view from Shaker, okay? Uh, so there are two kinds of entrepreneurs, okay? We, when I see entrepreneurs coming and pitching to, <coughs> pitching to us, right? One who has done something before, has got deep knowledge about a particular product, spent 10, 15 years uh, working across the globe, okay? They have worked in large corporations, understand the domain very well, and they understood the gap and jumped in, okay? And then, so look, they can articulate the problem they're trying to solve, and why, who are the competitors. They can just go in any dimension and say, look, this is why am I doing that, right? Those guys ideally suited for attacking the US market and go, go global from day one, okay? But bulk of our entrepreneurs don't have that, okay? They just stumbled upon an idea and then figuring out where the market is, okay? That's like 90% of uh, the entrepreneurs we see today, okay? They are like a wandering electrons, I call it, okay? Just go here and there, okay? <laughs> and it's a fuzzy, fuzzy few years, first four or five years, and a uh, lot of uncertainty, okay? Uh, and then, in that case, right, I, you are basically wandering around, okay? Experiment in India, see if your product works, you can you get customers, then go to Southeast Asia, see what worked here, because they have similar demographics, okay? Similar reasons make it happen there. Then go chart your journey from India, go to Indonesia, Philippines, Middle East. You crack this market, you are good, okay? These markets are pretty big, okay? For example, one of our companies mentioned capillary, strong only in these four markets, okay? Can you build a $500 million company? The answer is yes. Seven years back, we didn't know. Six years back, we didn't know, okay? They are also wandering around, okay? All over the place, okay? Now, the DNA of the founder is, so, so I would split two, okay? You can't crack the US market, US market is crowded, okay? There are literally 5,000 plus SaaS companies, okay? In US, okay? And it's diced SMB, enterprise. So you really have to be very smart, okay? And focused to capture the US market. Okay? So I would say only, in my view, like if I find all the last six years we have been investing, Maybe I find two entrepreneurs, okay, who could crack that, okay? Maybe three, okay? You can count in fingers. So that's why the journey, I, my suggestions for Indians is go this way, and unless you are, up to it. Interesting uh, kind of contrarian views there, but the, the good part for the audience is clearly the answer is, if you do it right, you can build big businesses both ways. Um, I think uh, the other one that always gets asked is, you know, are you better off building a horizontal business or are you better off focusing on the vertical? Uh, and it, whilst this is the golden era, eh, I think that the one buzzword which has been out there for the last two years has been AI and uh, machine learning. You know, is that the only area worth starting up in at this point in time? Or do you guys see uh, uh, lots of opportunities across horizontals and verticals and you know, across mobile, uh, cloud, uh, voice, messaging? And, and, and love to kind of hear from the panelists, where do you see the next set of disruption coming from? And how, what's the right way of kind of attacking it for uh, an Indian product company? So let me take a shot at that. Um, so this is a very constant question, even in our partnership. You know, do we encourage our entrepreneurs to go horizontally, which means I build a product that can be used by any enterprise, or I go domain specific and sell in a vertical domain and build a product for that domain. Um, the, both comes down to the market condition. So most of the people don't do enough market research before they decide how to go about. When you do a decent market research, like Mohan said, if there are 5,000 horizontal SaaS companies in the US, and you are starting in 2017 and 18, and winning against an existing number of players with the same rules of the game, maybe slightly better pricing, I'm not sure you're going to win. So what we encourage is if you're going global, especially US market, pick a vertical domain which is not so concentrated yet with a lot of SaaS players. And you will be the winner. And we have done together one called Zenoti, 
which is uh, going after wellness industry. To some extent, there is no other viable cloud-based uh, wellness software, SaaS software for that market. Every demo translates into a customer. How often you see that? So for vertical, makes a lot of sense in my mind if you're going global. But if you're staying in India and Southeast Asia, these markets haven't bought quite a lot of digital tools yet. Most of the companies still don't have a CRM. Most of them still don't have an HR platform. Most of them don't have an ERP. Most of them still are running businesses on their WhatsApp or some phone calls and maybe spreadsheets. So they all will move to a software and here you can still play a, a horizontal role. But if you go vertical in this, it's a very, very small market. Unless those markets are big, it's very hard to make a large company. Whereas in the US, if you go vertical, there are massive opportunities. In my mind, every day I'm coming across teams that have found very unique opportunities, which is like several billion dollar underlying markets, completely vacant. What we get confused is what happens in the valley, we try to imitate here, and we forget that valley is a bubble, a small market that the people are focusing on. There is a huge market outside of valley where the businesses, whether you take in supply chain, whether it's fintech, whether you look at logistics, retail, there are quite a lot of opportunities in various other vertical markets where SaaS can go in. Yeah. Mohan, your views on the horizontal versus yeah. vertical debate, you've got both in your portfolio. Yeah. So uh, my thing is very clear, I'll go vertical first, okay? Uh, simple reason is uh, I'm a big believer in uh, starting in India and Asia, and then going to global. Um, and you need deep technology expertise to build a horizontal platform, because you have to think use cases which are cuts across industry, okay, financial, uh, HR, financial, retail, uh, manufacturing, and uh, the cost of development of such a product is very high, okay? Uh, it requires people with deep expertise, probably not available here. So, I adopt a strategy, for example, if you're starting in India, okay, Start a vertical area, okay, but build your product open, okay. Use open source technologies, make the product extendable. Because as Shrega was telling, the market is not big. You'll find, let's say, you go to a healthcare industry and start a lab management software which addresses a diagnostic center. It's not big, okay. Even if I include Indonesia, Philippines, and Middle East, okay, you'll get there. Maybe a 40, 50 million dollar. It's not big, okay. So you need to go to hospitals. You need to go to doctors. You need to go to pharma. So you look at across the industry, you need to provide sooner or later, out of the second and third year, you have to migrate to adjacent solutions, okay? So you have to engineer a product. So I think what I say is, what happened, what SAP and Oracle did, right? They have a horizontal platform, but it takes phenomenal effort to customize, okay? You need, if I'm spending a dollar on a platform, I need to spend five to ten dollars every year, right? Engineer platform, I think technology has advanced so far today. The customization can be done in not one dollar, maybe you can do it in 30 cents, okay? So build in, build in your product and tools, think about it, that you can go to the adjacent area very rapidly, okay? So you don't need to re-engineer the product, okay? So have the product capabilities of a horizontal platform, target a picker vertical where you're good at, and quickly, or the, when I say quickly, not in the first year, third or fourth year, start going to adjacent products, okay? So you probably need a, multi-product to win the vertical market, okay? So you pick retail, you'll require three, four products, okay? You pick healthcare, you'll, pick, you'll require three, four. Same as financial, you pick any vertical, you'll find that in this market, US is different. Uh, I say, look, once you master that, go to US, okay? Unless you have that where we call to fight. That's an interesting pros uh, viewpoint. I think just also looking at time, uh, probably one more question before we kind of open it up to the audience. Um, but if you look at the, the, the SaaS ecosystem in the US, there's a couple of companies which have scaled to more than 100 million in ARR in five years, uh, Slack and Workday being prime examples. And you know, unfortunately in India, we haven't seen it yet. There's now a couple of them who've kind of crossed 50 million. Uh, uh, but many of those that, that kind of get there have taken longer and, and it seems to be more of a seven to 10 year kind of journey to start to hit scale. Um, you know, any thoughts there on why it's taking longer? And any thoughts on you know, how the next generation of startups can kind of crash the timelines and potentially uh, uh, we can see a $100 million ARR company from India uh, from start to $100 million in five years? Yeah, so uh, 
you know, five, six, seven, I will take any day, even eight years, <laughs> you know, if, if we can get 100 million a year, our company. Not an easy number to hit. No. You know, when I used to be a part of Verisign, there used to be business pitch inside to say, I will go and build 100 million, and people used to say, ignore it, it's too small. Only when I become a VC, I realized how difficult even to build a $5 million business is. So um, I think there are fundamentally few challenges. As an overall ecosystem, there is uh, still uh, not a lot of clarity about how to go about building scale-based startups and where we need to spend time. And that translates into what I call it as lack of market study or benchmarking and what's the best way to go about. And every entrepreneur in India today is solving by first principles. Enough. I, I, I urge them to shamelessly copy. Everybody is setting up six months to figure out how to do login name, password, and forgot password. They will build their own flow. Don't go and look at who's the best guy who has built it and copy it. How do I set up customer onboarding? We don't benchmark how others have built it. And if you cut that down, usually I think the first four years, we can reduce into like less than a year. Our own startups, first four years it takes them to figure out who my customers are, what my product, why they like my product, and what is the best way to sell them. And now I know that I need money to scale that. If that cycle can be shrunk from four to five years to one year, we will have many, many, many uh, sizable companies coming out of the country. Most of the issues are in the early phase of the startups. As they start scaling, I think there is enough money in the market, yeah. but the first four years is the years where, you know, when there are a lot of activities happening, but our entrepreneurs are not moving to the scale thinking and precision thinking yet. You know, I think it's very extremely slow today. It takes uh, probably 10 years to reach a 50 million, okay, the current state, and on average, I mean, there are a few exceptions. See, the ecosystem is built when you can build a company worth 50 million dollar revenue in maybe in five to seven years, okay. That's the, US is about, uh, in seven year average, I was looking at is about 70, 75 million they reach in seven years, okay. Uh, are we there? The answer is no, we are not there, okay. Uh, I think there are many reasons, okay. One is like many of our entrepreneurs are accidental entrepreneurs, okay. So, <laughs> It's very, sometimes it's very frustrating when I sit on the other side, right? You got to really, it took, takes like three, four days or sometimes weeks to understand why, why are they solving this problem, okay? Why are you doing this business, okay? Have you understood your competitors? Have you talked to your customers? How many customers have you talked, okay? Across the industry, what did they say? Did you factor that into your so these are very simple questions which every entrepreneur should ask. Why am I doing this, okay? Am I doing it because uh, uh, enterprise software is sexy now, I'm going to go out to a few investors, I'm going to raise money? <laughs> no, okay, you really have to go ask yourself a question, am I going to commit next 15 years of my life? That is what it's going to take, okay? 10 years to get it right, 15 years to get your realization, okay? We hope it's 10 years, okay? But today it's 15 years, okay? Are you ready for that, okay? So. I think we need to see more entrepreneurs who have studied the problem before they jump in, okay? So that's the root cause, okay? Second one I see is like their ability to spend on sales and marketing, build a sales and marketing team. I, I'm not touching upon the product that's important, okay? So we figure out like the third or fourth year, we do a lot of mistakes. There are playbooks available, okay? Inside sales, branding, lessons in marketing, all available on the net, okay? Table stakes, okay? How many of you have read that, okay? How many of you have read all the playbooks? How many of you have read what is the best practice adopted by different companies? When I ask the questions, nobody knows, okay? Maybe one out of 100 entrepreneurs look, I have this, right? So this information is already available, okay? So you got to build at the right time, quickly, sales and marketing and branding, okay? And you, not, you need to develop your own unique channel, okay? The market is crowded, right? So you use traditional channels, you buy keywords, all will be expensive, okay? So really need to figure out what touches your customer. Only then you'll know if few customers will tell you, this is my problem. You got to grasp on to that problem. Use that as a channel, okay? Whether it's marketing, whether it's uh, a sales pitch, whether it's your video blogs, that's when you get a viral, right? So these are thought process which I think we educate people, okay? 
but I think the ecosystem has to mature, okay? I think that's one of the fun reasons. Yeah. I think that's a good parting fault before we throw it open. The ecosystem has to mature. Uh, I think we've got five minutes left, so it would be great to, uh, great to get a couple of uh, questions from the audience uh, for these panelists, please. Uh, and if you could state your name and... Uh, Yeah, you have all your data in one single system and you know all the benefits that come with one single system itself. Yeah. My, my thing was with respect to the context, okay? So you are like a vertical industry, the market is smart, okay? Okay, especially start in the India and Asia, the market is smart. Okay? So you have to build a hundred million dollar company, the market size, create every all time a new software. product with all over again, it takes time. That's why I'm saying, think like a horizontal platform, target a vertical so that you can expand into adjacent product quickly. Please go. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is to uh, Shekhar. So it's just touching on something you said initially around an entrepreneur who leaves their family and wife and all of that. So is that the right precedent to set for the ecosystem of new entrepreneurs coming in? No, just that. And second question is to uh, Mohan. And so with regard to capillary, so what do you think capillary did right that can be emulated? Um, some of it, I don't know if you, how much of it you can divulge, but just from your perspective, what do you think worked? Yeah. So uh, I think it's an important message, I say, for every entrepreneur. Don't be an accidental entrepreneur. Be a mindful entrepreneur. Because if you are going in the journey and you are going to start, every one of your success creates hundreds of those. Many of the failures drag down the ecosystem as well. So if you go, you know, Chaltai, let me try for another six months. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, great. I get two customers. I'm somewhat profitable. Again, let me continue on. That's the journey I'm trying to say is not worth the time. So if you're going in, at least break into four, four year uh, uh, time. Next three, four years, I'm going to give a full heart at it. I'm going to build world's best thing. And my passion to solve this problem is so high, I don't care about it. And I go with full might and force so that the world notices you and you create a value. That is a lot more successful formula, is what I'm saying. Anyway, you're going to do that. You will be working 18 plus hours. I'm guaranteeing you, as a startup entrepreneur, starting from sweeping the floor to getting to the customer, fixing the phone, getting the laptop, getting the higher internet speed, everything happens. So might as well take on a bigger problem, might as well go for a bigger dream. Why struggle? That's what my uh, recommendation is. I think what worked in Capri probably it's a, I think Anish can do probably a one day workshop on what all he tried, okay? What all didn't work, okay? So that more lessons learned in what all didn't work than what worked, okay? So I think they were started with, I think a long story short, I won't go too many into it. Uh, they started SMB market in India, like one or two read, one or two shops, quickly vacated it because that's not a market you could collect, okay? So you went to, enterprise market. So they're a vertical software company, started with one product, which is loyalty management. And uh, so they had to really go up market and target customers who can pay like $50,000 a year, okay? Not, uh, because that, that market, okay, the market they're addressing, only they could pay, okay? So it took some time, okay? Then they had to build, when they go out, went outside India, they went into Indonesia, Philippines, Middle East, you have to build, we got the sales people wrong, okay? We had to get the sales people right, okay? Uh, and uh, so that's lesson, that's hit and trial, but there is a method in the madness, okay? So you could get it right first time now, okay? Maybe not in all markets, most of the markets, so you have to rebuild the uh, sales people, that was very important, okay? And third was, they have to get their marketing collateral material. They have to be a brand. Okay? So they have to quickly, they quickly become a brand because a lot of competitors now come and say, look, I can do what Capri does in one-fifth the price. Okay? Now we say go, let the customer go, okay? Before we say, okay, you'll match it. Now we say we're not, okay? You come back, you'll come back later, right? So you have to be a brand to uh, command that. So you'll find that in different stages of the journey, you'll have different uh, 
principles you have to apply so that you go to the next stage. Okay? Brand doesn't happen in day one, but you have to have that mind, I am building a brand. Okay? I am not, I'm not building a product which I will, competition comes and I'm going to go to the cheapest available, then you'll go to the race to the bottom. Okay, great. Thanks, Mohan. I, I think building a brand is a good parting thought. Thanks uh, for being a great audience and thanks, uh, my panelists, for being such a eminent uh, and knowledgeable speakers on this subject. And uh, yeah, uh, love to see the next generation of uh, enterprise products emerge from this room and kick ass in the global market and the regional market. Yeah.